Hello, creative people. Welcome to Creative Conversations. My name is Hollis Citron, and we are so happy that you have chosen to spend this hour with us. So I am owner and founder of I Am Creative and Express Yourself Publishing, and I am on a mission to expand the definition of creativity beyond a pencil and a paintbrush and empower people, especially adults, to own their voice that come in so many different forms. So this space was created to talk with people with all different jobs, hobbies, and interests, and have conversations about experiences and perspectives all centered around three questions. One, how do you define creativity? Two, how do you incorporate it into your life? And three, why do you think it's important? Then we have a free-flowing conversation and we see where it goes. So I have had the opportunity to talk to musicians, Reiki masters, mediums, doctor, lawyer, real estate agents, and so many more. And these conversations explore the reality that creativity is not cute, it is necessary. People have defined creativity as their soul's essence, courage, imagination, basically all that we are and want to be. So sharing these stories expands one's thinking and opens up self-expression to feel more empowered, connected, and dare I say, happy. So my inspiring guest for today is Patricia Wallace. Patricia is an, is an accredited coach and offers many courses and private sessions to help women break through inner blocks and tap into their full energetic potential to create a life that lights them up on a soul level. She's certified in several healing modalities, and she's been a holistic healer and psychic reader for over 20 years. Patricia, welcome to the space. Hello, Hollis. How are you? I am wonderful. How are you? I'm doing well. It was a, an amazing day for creative flow, I must say. Kind of funny. Ooh, I can't wait to hear. You will tell us more as we speak. Absolutely. That's that's wonderful. So I want to welcome the people that are here live. Thank you so much for being here. So please feel free to type in the chat box any questions or comments as we go along, and we're happy to have you here. So Patricia, I read the tiniest bit about you here. Could you please give us a little bit more information about who you are before we dive in? For sure. I don't know why, but it's always a weird question to, to I answer. I know. I know. Um, it's like, just tell us about who you are and like two minutes your whole life no big deal. <laughs> um, in a nutshell everything that I now teach I had to learn myself and and integrate into my life in order for me to overcome a lot of abuse trauma and poverty and I find that I think that has really helped me stay grounded and attuned to where people are at in their life, in their, what I call remembrance, uh, remembering their worthiness, remembering uh, the magic that we all held inside of ourselves, you know, early, early childhood. I don't think there's any, any more magical place than when life just seemed so amazing, everything seemed possible, and you just had the energy to go for it. Yeah, this is going to be such a rich conversation because, yeah, that whole thing, like you said, you teach what you've been through. So it's not like you're uh, connecting with people and looking to help people and you have no idea what they're talking about because that doesn't that well, doesn't yeah. help anybody. It's just like, I really don't know what you're going through, but I'm going to try and give you my advice. It just doesn't really work. Well, I mean, what you can learn from a book uh, or in, in courses, because, you know, uh, I've, I've, I've studied, I've gone through different certifications, different diplomas and stuff. Uh, but the gap between the intellectual understanding and the emotional becoming, that, yeah. that yeah. is just a giant gap, right? And you, you can't learn that in a book. Cannot. There is no way to teach that. Ah, yes, emotional becoming. Love that. Okay, so here we go. So before we dive into the first official question, we're going to do our would you rather. So are you ready, Miss Patricia? I'm ready. Actually, to be honest, I completely forgot about what we were going to be talking about today. So I'm unprepared. <laughs> I'm just in the raw. 
<laughs> I love it. That's the whole point. That's the most beautiful conversations because this is just a conversation. So good. So it's going to be straight off the cuff. So that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot from the hip. <laughs> so the would you rather question is, would you rather stay up really late or wake up really early? Wake up really early. Uh, cause I mean, the funny thing is, is I, I'm just not a night owl, never have been not even as a teenager. And, uh, but I'm also not, uh, like a, like an, a morning early bird person. I'm more of a day pigeon, but <laughs> I've challenged myself lately. Um, it's actually really in alignment with what I've been working on. Uh, you know, you, you read about when you're somebody who's really into personal development and pr pushing the limits of uh, the human potential that we have, you, you're nonstop reading uh, what all of the other greats have done and what people have, have you know, in integrated into their life. So I try the, to join the 5 a.m. club horribly <laughs> did not work didn't work yeah yeah but recently i have committed to the 5:55 a.m club ah. magical number but when my alarm first goes off i just reach out to grab my earphones and listen to a meditation and um, um affirmations to dial into whatever it is I'm trying to manifest. And for me, manifestation is intentional creation, right? It's beyond just thinking, wishing, and hoping. Um, and it, I mean, I, it's just dialed me in. I have the energy to face the day. I have this amazing optimism and I'm an overthinker. So <laughs> it's actually been pretty amazing. Wow. So wait, I want to hear about this. First of all, I love how you went from the 5 a.m. club, staying within the realm and just put the magic numbers of 555. <laughs> it's like, I feel good about that. It's not six. It's not like that much later, but 555, it's like when something's, you know, 29.99, it's like you're almost at the, anyway. So I love that. But when you're listening so these, um, uh, what you immediately put your headphones in and what you listen to, is it just random or it's already chosen for you what the meditation is going to be? It's pre-chosen. It's pre-chosen so that it's a no-brainer because when you, this is a biohack, right? When you first wake up, every human is already in an alpha brainwave state. And the less you wake up, the more in between waking and dreamland you are, then you're kind of on the borderline of alpha theta waves. So this is like prime prime time, like prime real estate time to tap into your creative human potential, to direct your life however you want, to really affirm in uh, success and, and all of that amazing stuff without having to go to the therapist without having to practice deep meditation and all of that and so I have it pre-chosen so it's a no-brainer and I don't really have to wake up to get it going it's like already open uh like a SoundCloud link right there in my web browser on my phone oh my gosh that is brilliant that is brilliant I love this so wait do you fall back asleep I, it's like I go back into a sleep state which you want to you want to because what's happening on a biological level it's you're you're going right into like your alpha brain waves are the gateway to your subconscious the theta brain waves are your subconscious so you're going right into that to be focusing your subconscious mind which then aligns your energy it aligns your mindset it gets everything lined up for you uh it's a, it's an amazing biohack and it was actually me listening to um this neuroscientist Huberman, he has a podcast and uh, it's like he's a, he's a Stanford uh, neurobiological teacher. I don't even know what his uh, proper uh, uh, title is, but uh, he has this podcast where he just talks about neuroscience, all the different things coming up uh, in lab studies. And when I was reading, like listening to him talk about how as soon as you wake up, you're an alpha brain already. I'm like, what? Mm. And everything in me shifted. I'm like, I need to hop on that train and make my biology work for me because I'm a mother. Uh, I've got, you know, like a, a neurodivergent child. I've got a business. I, you know, I've got so much going on. I'm building a hobby farm. I'm literally taking a beekeeping course right now, prepping mm. for keeping bees. And um, I just don't have time for like deep meditation and everything. Oh my gosh. I could just spend the whole hour talking about this. I just love this. 
because I am a total snooze presser and I know my mom is on this podcast right now and she could, if she knew how to text into the chat box below, she would completely affirm that I've been doing this ever since I was a kid. I would just press the button, press the button, press the button. Could be for an hour. Um, <laughs> I love sleep. It's an amazing thing. <laughs> but I love this. So, okay. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's just beautiful. Okay. So here we go. How do you define creativity? Uh, okay, creativity, what is that to me? Well, creativity is tapping into creative chaos and seeing, envisioning what you have never experienced before. It's like seeing pure possibility and then that's like the first part of creativity. The next part is to be so inspired by what you saw in the ethereal, whatever it is that we can't even quite explain, and, and to be so taken by it that you, you do what you have to do to bring it into the, into the material realm. And, and you're like driven to do it. You can't stop because once you've seen what could be and you own it and you don't you know, allow yourself to be afraid of it, it's a... Uh, becomes an obsession almost becomes an so are you saying that it it stems from the imagination i i believe that it's even beyond like what is the imagination right i believe that it stems from the spiritual realm it stems from a uh, collective god consciousness where you know what happens when our minds all sort of sync together as humans suddenly um, all of those uh, uh, machines, the binary code machines that, you know, that are more chaotic will just go into alignment and you've got like perfect, perfect uh, patterns appearing. When we tap into collective consciousness, I think that's what imagination is, where everything, literally everything that we can't even conceive of right now is possible. And that's what imagination is, and that's what we tap into to then decide to bring it into the physical realm, to create it here. But it's like balancing, you know, a lot of people call it a feminine energy or the yin and the yang, you know, feminine, masculine, yin and yang. I mm -hmm. consider it more architect energy uh, and uh, combined with builder energy, where we take what we visioned and make it real. I'm processing. Yes. Yeah, I just love the whole collective consciousness because there's, I guess it just reinforces just connection because mm -hmm. we're all energy. It's like once we really understand that, once you really understand that everything is energy, I mean, we were driving home from having an amazing hangout with my mom and brother and talking about how water has a memory mm -hmm. yes. and how it's you know what imagination what makes us human is the fact that we have this next level concept of like imagination that it's not just inventing like we can kind of take it to the next level and see things and i just love how you're wording things as saying there is there's such passion in, in the possibilities like once you recognize that it's so friggin exciting but it's scary at the same time when it's scary. something you've mm -hmm. never experienced in life. Like, say, for instance, um, I grew up, like I said, with a, a lot of a lot of trauma, a lot of things going against me. And what I directly experienced in life only reinforced the negative inner beliefs that I had developed because of my traumas, like the idea that um, I don't belong right that was a very powerful thing i had to learn to overcome because that's what life taught me i was always moving around i was the poor girl in clothes from garbage bags and i didn't have money to even buy birthday presents for people that i was trying to make friends with so one time i'd gone to a birthday party in high school and i had very little of myself you know stuff that i owned myself but i had gotten some crystals um 
And so I took my most favorite crystal that I thought was the most powerful, the biggest one that I had, and I wrapped it up to bring to a birthday party. And it was, I was really proud of it. But then another kid had like a giant crystal set that they were giving to this girl. And then they kind of looked at mine. Oh, well, that's nice. Right. So it was like reinforcing I did not belong and that I was not good enough. But piercing through the veil and looking into the realm of possibility, I saw a life where I could belong. I saw a life where I could be treated well or experience love. And, and I couldn't get that thought out of my mind. And it inspired me to, to change things up, to change how I interacted with people, to change what I allowed into my life, etc to create it in, in reality, even though I had never experienced what it would be like, or if it was even truly possible. So I love this. So you're touching on something. This is really, really important. So you're piercing through the veil. You saw the possibilities. How long did it take? Because you had a lot going on. I mean, there was, it was a lot of things, domino effects kind of going on for a long time. So, um, when did you start to see these possibilities actually uh, materialize? To see them materialize? Well, I'd say that I first pierced the veil when I was 14, um, seeing that it could be possible. And oddly enough, that was a day that I, you know, 14, you could be so dramatic. That was the day that I decided I was going to kill myself. That, that was the end. I was so done with a life of suffering. And it was my birthday because that was even more dramatic. But then it's like literally because I'd gone to the woods for that. Uh, the clouds parted and a beam of sunshine literally shone right on me. There was it stopped raining over me, but it was raining everywhere else. I'm like, what the frick? Oh, my God. Are you wait, wait, wait. I have to stop at that. Are you serious? I am. I'm so serious. It was the most profound moment of my life. And it's like. There weren't words that I could hear, but it was an emotional feeling. And then it's like emotionally, I could feel that more was in store, more was possible. I would find my place. And now was not the end. But from that, from that time, it wasn't until I was 37 before I was able to get my <laughs> shit together enough to, to just, you know, truly jump into the void of possibility and burn my old life. So 23 years later is mm -hmm. when it, it, it really came to that fruition, which is, it's just amazing. And, but as, so give us a little bit more of a picture of, of how you grew and how you continued to push through. You had your first child at 16, correct? Uh, no, I, or 18. I was 18 when I got pregnant, 19 by the time I gave birth. Okay. Because you had two children by the time you were 21, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have four and then, children all together. You have four children all together. So tell us a little bit more just about this journey. Um, yeah, well, just tell us more. Giving birth, well, getting pregnant, suddenly uh, it just changes your perspective. And I stopped trying to push towards the future. I started thinking about my children's future, my child on the way. Um, once they were born, I really started to feel like I had to be able to give them more than I had. And so I started taking, um, started taking it more seriously about how am I actually going to break the, uh, these, you know, patterns and the generational trauma I was born into. And, and honest to goodness, serial entrepreneurship was, was the only way that I was able to break free and, and elevate myself out of poverty and struggle and elevate, you know, give myself the financial ability to emancipate myself from uh, an abusive relationship because I had no money. I had no education. I uh, dropped out of university on, from full scholarship, right? Mm -hmm. um, because I didn't know how to balance motherhood and studying. Uh, motherhood consumed me. Uh, but in that consumption, 
I realized I want to know how to keep my baby healthy. And I'd learned about plant medicine growing up as a First Nations woman. And I thought, well, this could be good. So I scraped to get a little bit of money to get a book uh, and, and start learning from that. And I made a few skin salves that I was able to sell to get money back from the book that I bought because I felt guilty buying the book for me, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and then from there, uh, I, 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 you know, spent 10 bucks on a how to make soap book off of eBay and then scraped together what I could to get stuff from the secondhand store to make soap so I could sell, uh, you know, so it was really through challenging myself to learn a new skill. Uh, and really, what, to me, that's also another form of creativity. Oh, yeah. Creating, you know, skills are what allow you to create the vision you have and bring it into reality. Yeah. You got to skill up. And you got to yeah. be, you got to be dedicated to the path of incompetency, to competency, mm-hmm. right? Because you feel like an idiot when you're trying something for the first time, and you realize you don't know what you're doing, but your your vision and your drive and your passion to make that life a reality uh, is what drives you. Well, one thing that we said, and I'm not sure if I'm quoting it correctly, but when we had our pre-chat. I wrote down, and you'll clarify I didn't get it if I didn't get it right, if you remember. I wrote down, you cannot have perfection and everything be okay. Yeah, I, there's no such thing as perfection. Right. I don't think. Because it's, it's a continual evolution. And the thing is, is once you get to a place where you manifested, you intentionally created uh, what it was that you wanted. You've got your dream. You've got your goal. For many people, we can almost be like addicted to the chase, but once it gets there, it's our new normal, Mm -hmm. right? There's like a moment of, Oh my God, it's here. And then the next day, it's just the next day. Mm -hmm. Right. And so to feel like I made it, this is the promised land. No, everything you create you already are right now. It's already in you. It's already a part of you. I do not believe that a desire planted in your soul is something that is not meant for you, right? Like, I don't believe that you will desire something that you're not capable of creating. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I love that you said you got to skill up and incompetency to competency. That's, it's, if it's in you or if it's well, you're saying if it's in you yes it's like you bring it to life you 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 make it happen in whatever ways that you need to happen and whatever the learning curve needs to be you're passionate about it but then i believe it can also be on the outside where you know you realize it i guess maybe it was inside but you didn't realize but something may spark from the outside and you're like oh my god i really feel passionate about whatever that is. I want to bring it into my life. I want to gain that skill set. I'm not, maybe it ends up coming naturally or maybe it doesn't, but it's something that when it feels that, we know the difference between, I'm kind of going on, I'll see if I'm making sense. But when something really feels good underneath, then we're just going to do what we need to do. Sometimes it doesn't feel good, but we still know that we're driven we just have to get past that uncomfortableness in order to get to the other side. If any of that made sense. No, yeah, well, that makes sense. And I, and I love that you said that because, you know, uh, a lot of my students will say, oh, Patricia, you're too humble and blah, blah, blah. But I will always tell people, I don't teach anyone anything. And, and I don't believe that anybody, anybody really teaches me anything. I believe that we get, you know, that, you, that external spark you were talking about. To me, it's like it's nearing. And when we have this spark light up in us, it's it's us remembering our true purpose, mm. our true path. I believe that it's a everything, like all of life is just a journey of coming back to self, like full circle, remembering who you are, remembering that it's almost, you know, with our creative abilities, you know, how, um, you know, from not for, for anyone listening, uh, I'm non-denominational or anything like that, but it's just like, you know, in the Bible, uh, how they say we're made in God's image. We're made in God's image because of the creative powers and abilities we've been given, right? It's like we're God's embodied because we can tap into 
divine creative chaos. And we can bring that into the physical reality that we're currently gifted with, right? And despite all of the suffering and all of the trials, struggles, and tribulations that I've experienced, uh, I've come to see or to recognize our time on earth as like, because I believe that our soul is timeless, immortal, conscious energy, which, you know, what greater gift can we be given than to experience life? Mm. What greater gift can we be given, right? Like you can, you can understand the concept of compassion, but to actually be able to embody compassion, to be able to put somebody need before your own out of compassion, to be able to set aside your animal drives, right? We all have things that we want, things that we need, but then we have the choice to love. We have the choice to uh, compromise. We have the choice to experience um, happiness and joy, but we only really understand it when we've experienced sadness and suffering, unfortunately, because if it was all happiness and joy, la-di-da, all day long, we wouldn't recognize what it was. I've always felt like our souls were like, the ones that won the energy lottery and we had a chance to come and experience physical existence for this mm. incarnation. So, yeah, I totally agree that you need to have the contrast in order to, you know, see the difference in things. So I think I, I know the answer of what you're going to say, because some people it's interesting. We were in my daughter and I were at this uh, class, this workshop that we go to on Wednesday nights. And one of the people said, I believe that, uh, that earth is, is hell. And when we, when we die, it's, you know, that's where we go to heaven. And I was like, whew, tell me, tell me what your initial reaction is when you hear that. <laughs> well, quite the opposite earth. Uh, I guess I've always just believed that heaven and hell are just perspectives. And that we, through the shifting of our, of our perceptions, we have the opportunity to view the exact same occurrence in vastly different ways. Uh, and it's uh, our perception that creates a reality. So somebody truly can perceive this existence on earth as pure hell. And if that's their belief system, everything they experience will go through that lens, right? This is something that I teach when I'm, when I'm teaching people to recognize where their blocks are, to recognize the power of their belief and belief bias with the exact same scenario, like if it comes to manifesting love, if, you know, somebody is, is starting to get serious with someone, but then, you know, they have the history and the belief system that, oh, everybody's a cheater, or somebody else, you know, uh, has the has had the experience of losing someone and because they just never came home for dinner, right? Mm. Uh, while they're starting to open up their hearts up once again, uh, the person they're falling in love with uh, suddenly is late for Valentine's Day dinner. Who, what their perception is completely different. One person's gonna be triggered and think, oh my God, they're cheating on me on Valentine's Day, blah, 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 they're gonna be so angry. The other person who's lost a loved one is gonna be like, oh my God, did something happen? Did they get in a car accident on the way home? Right? Like, right. right. <laughs> exact same experience can be vastly, you know, ex different in how we perceive it based on our lenses. Yeah, that's what always amaze me, amazes me is just the lenses, perceptions. It's just, I've always found it so fascinating. Um, lately, I, amazing. lately, I've been talking about it a lot in the sense of um, photography. Uh, that when people capture just images, the whole thing physically with a camera and having a lens, it's just, I've always found it so amazing that what your eye chooses to look through the lens at and take that picture and capture that moment. Mm -hmm. There's just, because we could be looking at the same thing and some people could zoom in, some people could zoom out, some people could just be zoom out so far that they see a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background. There's just so many, you could put it on an angle. You could put it, there's so many ways to translate the scenario. I think it's, it's just funny beautiful. though, because uh, they say that you can tell more about the photographer 
than than the person looking at the picture really and and also like the same thing when it comes to people writing screenplays because i was really into writing when i was younger uh so i was studying screenplay writing and uh th there's trends where you can you know uh a screenwriters, uh, professional ones, will be able to tell what age people were even at when they wrote their screenplay or their book because so much of the creator goes into it and so much of your perceptions and your perspective and what you're drawn to or what you're dealing with in life just naturally bleeds through your, your medium of whatever it is you use to create with. Mm. Oh my gosh, it's just such a rich topic. <sighs> so... I'm looking at what I titled this was, which was talking to a psychic manifestation coach. I want to kind of like look at that a little bit more. And I want to just have you talk more about how you help people break through their inner blocks and tap into their energetic potential. Like, what does that mean? Well, it's easy for anyone to be able to, you know, learn different techniques to manifest uh even to pick up on you know books uh, about healing and whatnot but we can get so stuck in our patterns that we can't see anything so for my clients besides giving them my unique approach to to remembering who you truly are forgetting your past experiences and the narratives and and patterns that they created um you know, like the, the term psychic, it's actually really hard for me to use that for, for many, many years, but I will just tap into where I feel somebody's energy is at and just blurt out exactly what's going on. I don't hold it back. I don't filter. I will hold people uh, to their bullshit. So, you know, when they'll be like, oh, it's impossible or that's just not for me, blah, 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 uh, to dive into that. Like, okay, let's go further. Let's go deeper. Why is it not for you? right? Like what's going on? And, and then I will just tell them what it is they need to hear. Either, um, you know, I'm feeling your energy is really stuck uh, in, your, in your solar plexus, right? Or it's just stuck in your throat. You're not speaking your truth or you are, you are hiding behind fear and you're afraid for people to see you shine in all your glory. You're afraid of judgment. What's going on there? Um, and so it's just about taking everything uh, that they learn and to help them bring it to the deeper layers of self. Uh, and that's, that's my process. How, how does one describe what it's like to connect to another person's energy and be able to, you know, yeah. help them see what they, what they refuse to see consciously. And when they're coming to you, they know it's not like they're not coming to somebody that's just going to um, give them a pretty little picture and just skirt over topics. You're diving in. We're yeah. working with this. We're fixing this. Well, um, I tend or, to work with a lot of uh, coaches or people that have been deep into the personal development journey, you know, spending 10 years or so and thousands and thousands of dollars in other courses and programs. And... Um, I remember when I first decided to start uh, a business online, when COVID hit, like so many others, right? Mm -hmm. I was just used to doing my little thing here in my small town um, in person. And uh, I was nervous to go online. Uh, I, I'm not an online person at all. And um, I didn't even really use social media personally even, right? So it was a big step. And I was so afraid of what I was bringing to market, but my very first client because I don't want to be somebody's healer. I don't want, I want people to be empowered and to recognize what they're capable of and to become their own healers. And so that's how I approached uh, teaching my lessons. And one of my, my very first client, it was the third, the third session she was in with me. And I always have video lessons because the, I don't want to take people's time trying to teach them the, the nitty gritty, watch a video, then we'll move, right? And uh, she uncovered her own subconscious block, the biggest block that had been underpinning every aspect of her life that she had been on a search for for 10 years. And she had paid massive amounts of money to some high level, high known coaches in the industry before unknown, obscure little old me. And boom, she uncovered her own block. We all have this capability, 
once we are given the tools to go deeper and then you have a guide who's there to just hold you to it and snap you out of it when you get caught up in your own narratives. Mm, yeah, caught up in your own narratives. That's it's yeah. And I love how you just said you don't want to be someone's healer. You want to empower them to be their own healer. It's giving people the confidence and um, to be able to take their power, get their power back. Well, otherwise, how is it truly an empowerment thing? It's just more of a, yeah. you know, a, a Patricia Wallace ego trip thing. If I were to do it any other way. And it's like um, a crutch. People, it's like a crutch. They're like, oh, I'm feeling a little low. I have to reach out to Patricia. Like, she needs to help me with this. In if I do to... my job right, I yeah. never need to see the person ever again. Because yeah. they've got it all. And, yeah. and they know it. And actually, yeah, it sounds weird for me to say this because, you know, I begin this... Uh, uh, this discussion with, you know, talking about alpha brainwaves and neuroscience, but um, I believe in the duality of our biological self. We need to address our physiology and the, our human behavior patterns. There's a physio physiological aspect to manifestation and intentional creation. If we want to change, we want to step out of what we currently know, but there's also the spiritual and energetic side. And uh, that's where the psychic side comes in. But in my earth magic program, for instance, where I take people through a process of learning key skills to reconnect to themselves on the deepest levels and to get that, uh, that confidence and that inner knowing back so that there's no more doubt left in life. And then I teach the basics of earth magic, which to me is, uh, has changed my life, talking with plants and because when I was so alone, because I didn't have people I could trust or rely on growing up, I had the plant kingdom. And, and I just think, you know, that that's a powerful thing for modern people to bring back into their lives, this deep connection and, um, uh, what's the term? It's a, we work together, we don't use the plants, we mm. ask them for permission to help us in what it is we wish to manifest and to create. So from that perspective, I had one client had joined uh, my Earth Magic program, and then she was actually disappointed. She was unhappy. Uh, she sped through all of the other stuff that she thought she didn't need and got right to the spell work, and then realized I was teaching the foundations, because um, I don't believe, you know, people cast spells that the most powerful spell you can create and you know you, you cast is the one you create yourself not trying to trust what other people do or keep searching for this big magical thing outside of you right that mm -hmm. it's an extension of you it's an amplification of you and so you know people have to stop looking for this magic ticket or this you know golden ticket outside of them and she was so disappointed because she like I don't have confidence that it's going to be right. I'm like, that's the whole point. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and she's like, I feel like you're just diminishing me. Just tell me the spells or tell me the proper things. I'm like, no. <laughs> I will not. You are the magic. <laughs> it just makes me laugh. Yeah. It's like, you're, you don't get it. You're not listening, but it's, it's the, it's how we're programmed. It's, it's this whole other way of thinking. Um, I just want to understand, I guess, a little bit more clarity for myself. Uh, when you say talking with the plants, is it talking with the plants? Are these, is this plant medicine that we ingest for health purposes or is it um, watering plants or nurturing plants? Um, well, all of the above. I am actually uh, a chartered herbalist that, you know, was one of the, one of the, um, Things that was really important to me, but in my in my manifestation courses, I don't teach plant medicine. I teach energetic, the spiritual side of plants. The mm. uh, you know what ancient ancient shamans would put together to try to help bring about change, right? Um, and you can use that for anything. But uh, when it comes to say there are living plant spells. A beautiful money spell that is, you know, was actually scary for me uh, to work on because I usually kill indoor plants my whole life. So how can you be a herbalist and not be able to grow plants, right? I just trusted Mother Earth to provide. But uh, uh, the money tree is a, is a beautiful plant. And when you repot it, if you write on a piece of paper the amount of money you would like to, to grow into, 
right? Because everything's in evolution. Uh, you place it at the bottom and then you, you, you replant the, the tree over top. Uh, you take care of the tree. And as you do, you connect to the tree and you connect to the, uh, to the level of financial freedom you're working towards. And it reminds, like, what I love about it is that, do, how do you know the spells? Well, I know spells work because of some of the crazy, wicked stories that I personally experienced and clients have experienced or people in my free workshops have experienced. But with the money tree spell, it reminds you that you have to take care of, you have to nurture and grow into your dreams. You have to mm. stay connected and dialed into whatever it is you're manifesting and, and challenge yourself. How do I nurture this? Even if it's love, you're manifesting love. How do I nurture it myself? How do I nurture the budding relationship in a healthy way? And if you money, how do I nurture my, my money-making skills? How do I nurture my connection to a relationship with money? Yeah. Right? You remind yourself every day. Um, and plant medicine, going out there, instead of just, I'm taking this, 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 right? If you're wild crafting, and, and instead of just taking, uh, find the most healthiest spot you can, and then say out loud exactly what you intend to, to do with their sacrifice, and wait for the plants that'll say, I, I'll be happy uh, to work with you on that. Right? There was this one little boy Oh, it was so sad. He'd gotten the worst uh, eczema and it was like encroaching over his face now, right? First mm. he was covering up his arms, then it was going over his face. So he's pulling his hoodie and tightening it up. He didn't even want to go to school anymore. So when the mom came to me and she goes, you know, like this is, this is destroying my child. I just went out to the woods. I asked the plants which ones would work with me and his ex eczema cleared up within a few days of using the uh, herbal wash um, and, and the combination of the handmade soap. And I've always believed that it's a partnership. When we approach everything, it's a partnership. Because in my mind, everything is a co-creation. Mm. Everything. Whew. God, you hearing this, everybody? <laughs> it's so powerful. <laughs> the crazy weirdo woman who talks to the plants. <laughs> so freaking powerful. So wait a minute. So I have to ask. I don't know if I'm going to sound stupid in asking this, but I have to ask. So when you said money tree, mm -hmm. is there like something that you get called a money tree or is no, it? Yeah, you can buy money trees at like so many grocery stores. If I can buy a really? money tree, um, I will send you a Google link to what a money tree looks like. And, it, uh, and it's actually, thank goodness, a hearty plant. <laughs> so <laughs> otherwise, you do not tie your finest to something you don't intend to do your best to keep alive. But this money tree, it's funny because my daughter, she said to me, it's amazing that plant's still alive, mom. You kill everything. <laughs> like, I ain't killing this one. <laughs> I am determined. We are nurturing this relationship. But it's ridiculous because as I became more intentional to nurture the money tree, uh, with with my my um, finance spell tied to it, I've also learned to become more mindful with money and to recognize that wow, I no longer worry about money. I used to be so deathly afraid every time I would go to pay for my groceries, uh, afraid of the you know embarrassment of what if I didn't calculate correctly and I have to return some stuff, I will just die inside again, right? Like. That's, you know, there's so many times in my life where that was a major thing. And now I, I don't even, I know there's enough. There's no fear and worry. There's no obsession over money. Um, and to be able to release the money anxiety and, and see how that changes the way that you approach finances and that I'm not afraid of it. I'm not embarrassed of it. I'm not putting it on a pedestal anymore. It is just a tool uh, to help me create the life I want to create, the life I want to live. Mm. I love how you just said not putting it on a pedestal. Oh, my gosh, we're getting to the top of the hour, so I want to get to the second question, which is, you've kind of said things already, but I want you to share more with people on how you incorporate creativity into your own life. I know that it's through a lot of your passion of what you're doing um, all the time. Um, you mentioned soap healing. I know you do crystal healing and Reiki, but 
I don't, whatever else you want to share on other ways that you incorporate creativity into your life. Well, I have to admit, I take a lot of my skills for granted now. It's just a normal part of life. Uh, so I don't even think of it as uh, being creative. But uh, what I'm doing now is I, I find ways to challenge myself. I always have uh, something that I'm actively creating. Uh, one for business, which to me, it's not even work. This is my realm to play. So I've just created a new membership. Uh, where every week I get to dive into my creativity and share my passions and purpose uh, because I want to, because I don't want to lose the edge of my skills as well. Mm. And you know, to me in business, creativity is just bringing my joys and love to life and being able to share it. And uh, I've just created what I was talking about this flow this weekend, I've created a brand new um, uh, morning mastery challenge where I was talking about tapping using the biology to your advantage so I created two new what I call activated affirmations because first you activate uh, your root chakra and your heart chakra in order to be really open to receive the affirmations and then close off the circle when you're done listening to them in the morning and then I I just created a a challenge so every single day there's an awareness challenge that gets emailed to you to just heighten it further to just really bring you to a step of deep awareness of where you're at your foundations your beliefs i'm so excited about this because i think this alone is going to be life-changing and this is another thing C being creative is figuring out because i'm not a tech person so everything is a challenge for me um figuring out how to be able to share our energetic reality as creative human beings with more people so they can shift into their creative source. And then personally, I'm creating self-sufficiency, right? Um, to uh, really develop a, a hobby farm on my, my property. Uh, I mean, how amazing is that to think it was just five and a half years ago, I restarted life with nothing but my books, my crystals and my clothes, literally sleeping on the mattress on the floor again with nothing and no savings and nothing but debt. And within five and a half years, I own my own property in the woods. I have investments. I have a business I've developed all on my own. I have an amazing husband who, because he believes in what I'm doing, he's taken over cooking and cleaning on the days he doesn't work. And my, my, my teen and adult child that are still at home, they cook on the weekends for me. It's like mm. I, I went from being a, a slave that was just uh, – born to have people take advantage of to, and not being you know i didn't matter to somebody that is nourished and cared for and has so much like it's, it's mind-blowing what you can do oh my god but what's so amazing and i'm sure that people can hear this is you are just passionate and you are coming from the from the purest of pure places of really wanting to help people <laughs> of wanting to get this information out to people to to enhance their lives i mean it just obviously shows through in everything that you do and i want to hear about this hobby farm what is the hobby farm <laughs> so so you know when you when you look at world events you can't and, and for me like growing up the way that i survived and managed to not i don't want to i don't want to i don't like talking about my early life because it people can start comparing um, traumas, which is never a good thing, right? A trauma mm -hmm. is a trauma is a trauma. Uh, but I have always was able to quickly assess worst case scenario and prepare for it. And this has never left me, which is, which often works against, you know, manifesting because it creates resistance. So I've had to overcome that. But when you look at world events, what's worst case scenario? all Western the world collapse. I have been preparing for post-apocalyptic living. Everything that I've learned has also been to prepare for that too, just in case. And so the idea of, I first I thought, I am going to manifest more money so I can buy a bigger property, right? And then you know how you can keep putting your dreams off to some per perfect utopia. And then it like slapped me in the face. Wait a minute, you have three freaking acres right here, right now. Mm. Let's get the bees going. Let's uh, plan to build a chicken coop. 
uh, I'm starting seeds, which is amazing that I'm, I'm actually growing uh, indoors <laughs> to prep for the winter, uh, to be able well, to get a nice garden. My husband has taken to making sausage himself from scratch, uh, lacto fermenting, you know, getting sauerkraut and stuff, the, all of the, you know, the old world skills, just bringing that in. And we're even growing mushrooms indoors, like, you know, shiitake mushrooms. I just had like homegrown shiitake mushrooms in a stir fry uh, and lion's manes and oyster mushrooms. Like it's amazing what you can do. And so that's what I'm building towards. And it's just going to be for personal enjoyment. I'm going to get some lambs too, but, but who knows where that's going to go. I say everybody should start building for themselves. And then when your joy and passion overflows, it will naturally expand. Exactly. Because you don't have to know the how. It's you're doing it because this is something that you're interested in and it's for the greater good. But you don't know what it's going to grow into. It's it just made me think of a while ago, my husband, he's a TV film editor, and he was working on a show where um, they're basically off the grid and they were just doing everything on their own, literally to, they bought this junk car and they were trying to fuel it with horse manure. <laughs> they were going to see, <laughs> they were going to see if they could get it to run on horse manure, which they set up this whole system and it did run. It stunk, <laughs> but it ran. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Too powered. <laughs> they did oh my god my husband was like it was hysterical like just watching it because it really did yeah it worked but everything that they did they they just created um for self-sufficiency um mm -hmm. and just loved every minute of it but what could be more fun right and that's like, the key in it oh, is that it joy it's, fun play joy I, that is the fuel of creativity it's everything i love so with bees so mm -hmm. did you did you just start learning about this aspect of the whole beekeeping oh this is brand new literally it was uh, just yesterday was the very last uh beekeeping um course uh it was uh like three hour long uh, lessons there was four of them because you have to learn a lot about bee physiology and uh, what could go wrong with the bees how to test for what could go wrong how to treat what could go wrong to make sure mm. you have healthy bees and uh, we we just had the beehive delivered for us to put together uh, mm. and so it's all coming together the nuke is ordered and um, you know it's so funny though because this is the thing for anybody listening like how many times have you had dreams that just kind of the excitement took you over. And for a little while you were rather obsessed, but then life took over, you kind of got pulled away. I have had uh, hobby farm uh, books and beekeeping books in my bookshelf for over a decade or more. Hmm. I can't even remember the, I think the very, like the very first herbal book was bought uh, over uh, 20, how old am I now? I'm almost 43, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny? You're like, wait a minute, how old am I? One, yeah, two, three, forget. four. Huh. But I mean, like, these are things that have been on the shelf, that have been in the queue, the creativity queue for a while, that are only now coming to fruition. But all of the stuff that I had invested in before to kind of get it in there, to be flaming the fires and, you know, stoking everything, uh, it's all coming together, right? Yeah. So it doesn't... When you release the time frame, you release the how, and you just follow the energy, follow the flow. And of course, there's practical matters to deal with in life, right? We can't be idiots about that. But just because you got derailed momentarily or decadely doesn't mean it's <laughs> off the table. It's, I love that you just said that. And please take that in, everybody. It's, it's so interesting to look at the things that you collect and you're so right. Like a while ago when you said you realize you get excited about these things and then life happens and you're like, oh, yeah, this kind of got pushed to the side. I forgot because this other energy took over. Mm -hmm. And since we're like so much about emotion, <laughs> other emotions kicked in and other, you know, I got fearful and worried and all these things. So that doesn't make sense to think about bees right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that, that's frivolous. That's, you know, da -da -da -da. when this is the whole thing that I 
the message in order to drive to people is that it's life. <laughs> like these things are life because they are what bring joy and happiness, which mm -hmm. create more connection, which create more balance, which create more self-awareness, which create, which gives us permission to do these things in our life. And when we allow for this, then we become these better humans. 100%. You know what? Like when you stop tapping into the playful, creative uh, side of you, I feel like you sever yourself from your soul. And then mm -hmm. you just become a shadow of a person with no sense of passion, no sense of purpose, no sense of anything. And then you start, start to fall apart. And um, you just have to find your way back into that. You have to snap out of those patterns and remember how amazing you are and how many outlandish ideas you've had throughout life that put stupid smiles on your face and recognize that that is pure gold those stupid smiles and crazy ideas yes. are worth more than anything worth more than anything i will oh my god i mean my job my job is done when this was probably eight years ago i don't even know i just pulled that number out of my head um one of my students uh she was an eighth grader really tough she just was a very tough individual um, wasn't really a communicator, could just break out into a fight in any moment. Um, I saw them every two weeks. So it wasn't very often for 45 minutes. <laughs> so it was like, <laughs> what, an hour and a half of a relationship, you know, every month. Um, but when she finally grasped the concept at one point, we were creating, we were creating um, like a business and they had to come up with its purpose and a logo and whatever. When she finally grasped it, she asked me and she said, I don't understand I don't know what it is yet. And I said, it's that feeling you get in your stomach that feels like excited butterflies. Like when that happens, you'll know it's right. Mm -hmm. And when I was in front of the class and just, it was the beginning, just reminding them what they were doing. She physically stood her back straightened up and she got a look on her face. And I just looked at her and said, you got it. And she just said, she shook her head. Yes. I'm like, that is worth everything. Because she was in the moment, she made this realization, and it made her feel powerful. It is powerful, though. When we drop the facade of maintaining the, the behavior we think we're supposed to maintain, and we allow our raw, natural human self and all of our glorious imperfections to be seen, and we allow the weird, crazy side of ourselves to be seen, we just own it. It's amazing how quickly your life just starts to click together. Your people need to see the real you in order to find you. Uh, your, your, your posse, your spirit group, your, you know, whether it's, you know, attracting your, your soulmate clients, your soulmate, your soul, your soul family. We need to let our light shine so we can be beacons and call in our life, the life we were meant for. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So let's wrap this up and we've pretty much, we've said it, but I'm curious to see how you tie it up and put a nice little bow on it. Um, why do you think creativity is important? Creativity is life. If we're not creating, what are we doing? There we go, baby. Creativity is life. Well, you're either a creator or a consumer, I guess. Hmm. And that's when you're just consuming and just consuming, consuming, consuming. That's when it doesn't feel good. Because mm -hmm. you're not actually doing all these things that we talked about. You're not actually really in touch with things. And you. Exactly. 100%. Creating oh my God. is manifesting. We're all manifestors, whether we want to you know, tap into that woo-ness or not. Yeah, we, we manifest whether we like it or not. Mm -hmm. Your life is a manifestation. And everything that you do is a manifestation from, you know, it comes from within you and reflected without. Can you please tell people how they can find you? 
Uh, people can visit me www.patriciawallace.online. You need to have the www in front of it for whatever reason. I don't know. I'm not a tech person. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you go to www.patriciawallace.online, not .com, .online, because .com was taken. <laughs> um, um, you're going you're gonna to see me. You're going to see the, the brand new uh, Morning Mastery Challenge. You get to choose whether you're going to focus on calling in love or calling in money. There's two different pathways. They're very unique. Uh, and it's right there at the the very as soon as you land on the page or you can scroll down to see go through the different portals of love uh, uh money magic or love i think that's the the order on there because i also have two blogs i've just started the magical money blog and manifesting love blog and you'll see that i dive into the science as well as the magic so you know everything i do is well researched uh, and I always share the links to the research too, because I'm a modern mystic and I'm assuming there's a lot of other people that are also modern mystics and they love the woo and the science and they want to learn it all. Mm -hmm. And is the blog on patriciawallace.online? Yeah. When you, when you go through the portals, money or love, then okay. you're going to see, oh, I can click, I can join the love blog there, or I can um, access the, the money blog there. You can subscribe or just visit whenever you want, because not everybody likes emails. Okay, perfect. So before we say our goodbyes, and I say my thank yous, is there anything that you feel like you want to say that you didn't say already? or? Yeah, I feel like I already laid it all on the table. You guys know that I'm weird. I'm crazy, <laughs> but I'm raw and I'm real. And and also, as you you really you really hit the nail on the head. I'm so passionate about uh, helping people shift out of pain, shift out of uh, trauma and past programming to remember how freaking amazing and powerful we all are. That that's reflected in my prices, like. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm a, I'm a top level coach. I'm accredited by two different international organizations. My coaches tell me I should be charging up the yin yang. Um, but I stay true to my roots and people, they can join with, with payment plan. Like there's 44 bucks a month for my new memberships where there's workshop libraries, meditation libraries. We still meet once a month. So there's still some live connection, 44 bucks a month. Canadian. Uh, and then even my certification programs where you learn so much and you learn how to monetize it too. And you go through deep healing, $99 a month for 12 months. I am not going to raise those prices because I want it to be accessible to the early version of me. I love that to the early version of you because you're passionate about you just want to help people. You want to help people get, you don't want them. I mean, damn, you said you were going to kill yourself and you had it. You had sunshine beaming on you while it was raining around you. I mean, come on. That is some power. <laughs> I want to be the person I wished I had run into to help me speed up the timeline and not have to go through so much more pain and suffering and loss. Uh, right. We, we touched base on a bit of that, but I think that this is another key thing too. We need to own who we are and not let people tell us otherwise. Thank you so much, Patricia, for hanging out with me this hour, having this amazing conversation. I so appreciate you. Oh, uh, this was a lot of fun. And I love what you do, the helping people tap into that creative force that lies within us. We are freaking magical beings right and we all have something to share with the world we all have something to share with the world whether that's our direct world microcosm or on a grand scale everyone is so freaking amazing thank you it's a mission it's a mission we need to bring this out in people and it is it's all within it's all within it's what we don't express we repress and um uh -huh. That it's an energy. It's an energy. It's when you hold energy, energy and you hold it stagnant, it will make you sick. It will. It will physically make you energy sick. Energy must um, flow. It must. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much to those who stayed with us live. Thank you for those catching the replay. This space is all about inspiring each other, sharing stories and connection. So please like, follow, share. I believe we have always needed this, but I think we need it now more than ever yes, that to be connection. able to, 
connect. We need the connection. We need to be there to lift each other up and hear each other and see each other. So wherever you are in this world, I wish you a good morning, a good afternoon, and a good evening, and look forward to connecting again soon. So goodbye, everybody. Feeling inspired? There are so many ways to do things for you, to get yourself moving, to get your creative juices flowing, and to have fun. Check out I Am Creative and Express Yourself Publishing. Go to IamCreativePhilly.com, IamCreativePhilly, P-H-I-L-L-Y.com, and check out the experiential kits, check out Creative Shui, which is all about creative inspiration and guidance, and for Express Yourself Publishing, there's so many multi-author book opportunities. So I would love to chat with you so much. Everybody has everybody's creative Everybody has a voice, everybody has an expression, and I can't wait to meet you. Thank you so much for taking this hour to listen to our stories and share the energy, and I wish you a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in this world. Bye, everybody.